I love this poem. It makes me laugh a lot. Um, it's just very, it's very silly and very clever and very accurate all at the same time. So yeah, hopefully you kind of like find it comical by the end of this lesson. So the, the opening line, I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? It's just sort of um, in your face really, isn't it? It uses direct address, it uses interrogatives, it uses an exclamatory sentence and it's kind of antithetical to the the normal human desire to to mean something to someone somewhere. So you, you could interpret this as a poem about fame and notoriety and kind of glory. And she's saying, I'm not famous, but you could also just interpret it as, you know, about what do you mean to people? Do you mean anything to anyone around you? And um, kind of exposes a sort of truth that there, there is a kind of lightness and freedom in the idea of not meaning anything to anyone if, if you want to live a sort of pain-free stressless life you can just be nobody and then nobody means anything to you you mean nothing to them and you, you can do what you like so it, it is a valid philosophy a valid approach to life but the whole time it, it feels kind of whimsical and feels almost impossible that you know it's part of the human desire to make connections and to to mean something to somebody and to have people um mean things to us as well it's it's important i think to foster those deeper social connections and also to connect on a wider level with uh, literature and art and uh, things in the world that really make sense to us and help define us as well we're constantly going through this uh kind of like discourse with the world that's sort of how I see it where you make things you put them out there people interact with what you make it helps them they carry it forwards <laughs> and then other people make stuff that you love and that kind of affects you so the whole discourse of uh, you know experiencing art or experiencing anything on a kind of wider scale even celebrities that you follow or people who are your role models in life even if they're not generally famous all of those a somebody to you they mean something and then you likewise uh, as an individual are probably that kind of person to someone like you might be somebody's role model so yeah so there's this idea of you know she feels like she's nobody she's not significant and she's asking the reader are you nobody as well oh great then there's two of us don't tell they'd advertise you know so it's it's kind of very very comical colloquial um sort of sensational the tone it's deliberately joking around and saying you know um this whole being nobody thing is going to catch on it's uh we can't have too many people going around not caring <laughs> not wanting to be somebody so the first one is about the first stanza is about the liberation of, of how it feels to be no one and the second stanza is about how rubbish it is to be someone so it kind of um, compliments but also presents the opposite side in the second stanza so how dreary how rubbish it is and boring to be somebody how public like a frog to tell one's name the live long June to an admiring bog so it's kind of like there's this sea of mud and there's a frog and the frog's kind of croaking to the general public or to the people around them and the you know the mud is listening back and it's it's kind of about the pointlessness of, of existence, really. And um, yeah, in some ways you could see it as quite a nihilistic or absurdist poem, but in other ways you could see it as more irreverent and comical and poking fun at um, people who take themselves too seriously or their mission in life too seriously. So I think it's important to note with this one that Dickinson was not really that famous in her lifetime. She did have some publications, so she did have a few poems published they weren't all that popular because they're far too uh, forward thinking really for her time. They're like really progressive and kind of unusual for, to read for something written in the mid 1800s. Normally this type of poetry, you see it cropping up around like the modernist era. So like 1900s onwards. So a lot of the stuff she does because it's experimental and because it's quite strange, the ideas and the sentiments that she explores, it was she wasn't that famous in her time. So maybe it's, her coming to grips with you know I'm never going to be famous or maybe no one will really care about all this stuff that I do the stuff that I write and the things that I think it might also be her kind of um expressing gratitude that she's not actually famous in her lifetime because she was 
notoriously quite a shy and reclusive figure. And she did correspond a lot with famous people in her time and had people visit Amherst uh, where she lived and, and kind of meet up with them there. But she never really traveled outside of her family's homestead or, um, you know, interacted with the wider world. So it's it's sort of like she has a, a kind of agoraphobia, I think, like she's really scared of um, going beyond the confines of her safe space. And then this is sort of like a justification for why she stays in that little little safe space. She doesn't actually want to go go out, you know, and be a really famous writer and have to travel around and talk to people. And she, she doesn't she deliberately rejects that type of life, um, even though I think deep down she knows she's perfectly capable of uh you know, having that kind of life because of her genius or her brilliance. So yeah, it's kind of funny and silly, but also, um, yeah, very deeply philosophical helps you think about, um, you know, the meaning of life, the purpose of existence, the way that we form social connections, either kind of, you know, within our family and friends and those around us, or more publicly with the job that we do, or um, any kind of art or literature that we create how that gets kind of proliferated through the world and starts to engage with people in a wider sense. Um, yeah, and making that choice between, you know, do you want a public or, or a private life? I personally really struggle with that one because I'm very shy naturally, but then because uh, I make loads of poetry analyses and I love poems and I, I really love literature. I have a, a platform where I talk about all these things in a public sense, essentially, and I'm absolutely terrified of um, videos and being recorded and um, yeah like interacting with people but not on a one-to-one -one basis so I, I completely understand <laughs> and vibe Dickinson's uh, fears and anxieties. I think the benefit of um, getting your stuff out there is a lot more then the the kind of drawback of like being scared of being filmed so if you're interested in starting your own youtube channel or you know your own platform where you do things and you interact with people you can think about this poem and think about it you know in that context um so yeah it helped me reflect on my own process as a as a teacher as well and my own kind of uh, life choices about like <laughs> trying to be public or not and that kind of thing so yeah, a couple of things to, to finish off with then. Um, there's a short elliptical style of poems. So it's very, very short. Elliptical means it's saying things in a really short, compressed way, but there is a lot embedded in there. So spend time unpicking the language. And it uses a lot of um, kind of exclamatory sentences, dashes. So there's a lot of energy, even though it's a very compressed poem as well. There's a lot of kind of jumping around and skipping of the line. So if you want more help on this one, you can go to the Scribbly page and um, have a look at the kind of detailed notes that I've put on there and download those as well. And uh, yeah, for now, hopefully you've got a good grasp on it and you find it an interesting, um, thought provoking and kind of whimsical type poem. So yeah, thank you for listening and I'll see you guys soon.